Greetings, in the name of the Most High Yahuwah and His Son, Yahusha, to the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad. Brothers and sisters, I am Brother Hiram, and my mission on this channel is to call the twelve tribes of Israel to a righteous repentance unto the Most High Yah and to believe the good news of His coming kingdom. Well, today, brothers and sisters, I am going to answer the question, what did Yahusha teach about eternal life? What did Yahusha teach about eternal life? Brothers and sisters, the reason why I'm teaching this is that, as you well know, my target in these videos is the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which... Uh, in our country, would be the so-called black, so-called Negro, so-called colored, so-called African Americans. And brothers and sisters, more specifically, I'm targeting those that are in the quote-unquote black church, those that know their Bibles, those that have begun a relationship with the Most High, but they're still in Christianity. They're still in the religion taught to us by our slave masters. Now, some of you may take that as a dig, but I am, I am being 100% with you there. That if you all watch my video, which is entitled, What Difference Does Israelite Truth Make? I have a link there. I have a link in the description section of that video that you can click on, and you can see a book that was written in the, I believe it was the middle of the 19th century, and it was entitled, How to Make a Negro Christian. How to Make a Negro Christian. And it was written by a man who called himself the Reverend Charles Colcock Jones. This was a slave master and a preacher. And earlier in the 19th century, they had what was called the slave Bible. You know, they took out the Exodus and anything that could have been revolutionary, anything that could have incited freedom. And they kept the passages in that talked about slaves being obedient to your masters. And so they took out a lot of stuff and left in what they wanted and called it the slave Bible. The reason why I emphasize this is because Christianity here in America, it has not radically changed since those days. It really hasn't. I mean, we're, we're still building upon that same theological foundation, you know, that same proto-Orthodox Christian foundation that what uh, so-called Reverend Colcott Jones was taught in his seminary it's probably not too different than what your pastors are being taught in their seminaries. There's a man whose YouTube channel I follow. He deals mainly in the realm of finance and business, but he brings out the word of Yah too. And he talked about when he went to seminary and how racist it was. He said they were teaching the curse of Ham at that seminary. They were teaching that we as black folk are cursed, cursed with black skin, cursed with kinky hair because of the so-called curse of Ham. And so that is my point, is that the truth began with us as the Israelites. And what has happened with proto-Orthodox Christianity? What I mean by that is the Christianity that is built upon the foundation of the so-called church fathers, the church councils, and Paul being their chief cornerstone. And so what they have done is they have taken the bread that originally belonged to us as a people, they have chewed it up, and they have spit it out and handed it right back to us in the form of modern-day Christianity. And so, brothers and sisters, this is why I challenge you to re-examine what you believe and re-examine it according to the Scriptures. And so I'm bringing out this about Yahusha and what he really taught about eternal life because too many times uh, when we talk about the subject of salvation and eternal life, we don't even include his words. We jump right into the epistles when it's Yahusha who we're supposed to be following, right? 
He's supposed to be our chief cornerstone, right? Hallelujah. So before I go any further into that, that if you are being edified by this channel and the videos that I'm putting out, then please hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell and share this. Share this video with your friends, with your family, with your pastor. Share this. Share this with the urban apologists. All right. Just partner together with me to be Yah's hands and feet to reach out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to begin by saying that Yahusha taught, as we well know in Matthew 5, he said, Think not that I am come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Torah till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Praise Yahuwah. So, what did he mean when he said he did not come to destroy but to fulfill? Well, if you read the whole passage, he tells you exactly what he means. Praise Yahuwah. He did not fulfill it in the way that modern theologians try to make him out to fulfill it, because the long and short of their doctrine is he kept the Torah so that we don't have to. And if, uh, if you doubt that, all you got to do is do a Google search, put in Jesus fulfilled the law, look at all these Christian articles that come up, and the long and short of them will be Jesus kept the law so that we don't have to. Praise Yahuwah. Whereas that passage, if you read the whole passage, he tells you exactly what he means. That he, feel, he fulfilled it in such a way that he still expects it to be done and taught. He made it crystal clear in that passage. So, seeing that he did not come to destroy the Torah and the prophets, what we need to do is we need to lay a proper foundation and ask ourselves, what do the Torah and the prophets teach about eternal life? And then we'll go back, see what Yahusha teaches, and see if it's any different. Hallelujah. So the first thing that I want to look at is Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, there's going to be a familiar verse of scripture, one that was quoted by Yahusha himself. But I want to I want to read that and I want to read it in context. And I want us to notice a couple things about this passage. I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, Guard to do every command which I command you today, that you live, that you might live, and shall increase and go in and shall possess the land of which Yahuwah swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that Yahuwah your Elohim led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, prove you, to know what is in your heart, whether you guard his commands or not. And he humbled you and let you suffer hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know to make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by all that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. So I read this because when we talk about life and living, See, he's not just talking about extended physical life here. When he says man shall not live by bread alone, but by all that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah, that's talking about spiritual life. That's talking about spiritual life, not just natural life, not just a promise of extended natural life, but it's talking about spiritual life. And the proof of that is, if it's just talking about natural life, then take the, the life of the unbeliever. He lives by bread, all right? But does he live by every word that comes out of the mouth of Yah? Of course he doesn't. 
praise Yahuwah. But if you're going to live spiritually, praise Yahuwah, then you're going to have to live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. So he's talking about spiritual life here. Now, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 18. In Leviticus chapter 18, and it reads on this wise, verse 4, verse 4. It says, Do my right rulings and guard my laws to walk in them. I am Yahuwah your Elohim. And you shall guard my laws and my right rulings, which a man does and lives by them. I am Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. So his laws and right rulings, and if you have a King James, it's his statutes and his judgments. And he said, which a man does and lives by them. Praise Yahuwah. And one thing about this, let's let the Torah and the prophets interpret the Torah and the prophets. Don't tell me about what somebody else had to say about this verse. Praise Yahuwah. Tell me what the Torah and the prophets say about this verse. You see, some of y'all know where I'm going with that, but th that's for another discussion. Hallelujah. Now turn to Ezekiel. Talk about the Torah and the prophets. Yahusha said he did not come to destroy the Torah or the prophets. Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel chapter 20. Remember what we just read now. He said that if a man does, he shall live. What kind of life is he talking about? He shall live. All right, let's continue here. Praise Yahuwah. Now in Ezekiel chapter 20, we're going to start in verse 10. In verse 10, Yahuwah says, So I took them out of the land of Mitzrayim, that's Egypt, and I brought them into the wilderness, and I gave them my laws and showed them my right rulings, so statutes and judgments again which if a man does, he shall live by them. Okay, he's quoting Torah, quoting uh, Leviticus 18.5. And I also gave them my Shabbatot, my Sabbaths, to be a sign between them and me to know that I am Yahuwah who makes them Kadosh. But the house of Yisrael rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my laws and they rejected my right rulings, which if a man does, he shall live by them. And they greatly profane my Shabbatot, my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my wrath on them in the wilderness to consume them. But I acted for my name's sake, not to profane it before the Gentiles, before whose eyes I had brought them out. And I myself also lifted my hand and an oath to them in the wilderness, not to bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, the splendor of all lands. Because they rejected my right rulings and did not walk in my laws. And they profaned my Shabbatot, my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols, and my eye pardoned them from destroying them, and I did not make an end of them in the wilderness. And I said to their children in the wilderness, Do not walk in the laws of your fathers, nor observe their rulings, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and do them. And, and Kadosh, or set apart, my Shabbatot, my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you to know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. But the children rebelled against me. They did not walk in my laws and my right rulings. They did not guard to do them, which if a man does, he shall live by them. They profane, they profane my Sabbath, so I resolved to pour out my wrath on them to complete my displeasure against them in the wilderness." But I held back my hand and acted for my name's sake, not to profane it before the eyes of the Gentiles and before whose eyes I had brought them out. Okay, so three different times we see Leviticus 18.5 quoted in Ezekiel chapter 20, stressing about which uh, the statutes and the judgments of the Most High, which if a man does, he shall live by them. What kind of life is this talking about? All right, turn to chapter 18 of Ezekiel, same book, chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18, I'm sorry, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18, verse 21. It says, But the wicked, if he turns from all his sins which he has done, and he shall guard all my laws and shall do right ruling in righteousness. 
So he guards all of Yah's statutes, and he does justice and judgment. He shall certainly live, he shall not die. All the transgressions which he has done shall not be remembered against him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. What kind of living is this? This is not talking about extended physical life. This is talking about spiritual life. Praise Yahuwah. Because it talks about people dying in their sin. These aren't people that just died at imminent death just because they sin. This is talking about spiritual death. Praise Yahuwah. So here, this is talking about spiritual life. He keeps the statutes and judgments of the Most High. He will live spiritually. He will live. This is talking about eternal life. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Praise Yahuwah. So we see what the Torah and the prophets teach concerning eternal life. So we're going to look at Yahusha and see if he taught anything different. Praise Yahuwah. So we'll turn to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. It reads, Not everyone who says to me, Adonai, Adonai, shall enter into the reign of the Shamaim, the kingdom of heaven, but he who is doing the desire, doing the will of my Father in the Shamaim, in the heavens. Many shall say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not Nabu or prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and did many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness, you who violate the law, you who violate the Torah. That's what that Greek word anamia means. Violator of the Torah. Praise Yahuwah. There's going to be many people that have been taught that they could violate the Torah and be saved. And they get to the end of their rope and they're going to find out they've been deceived. Praise Yah. Yahusha is going to tell them, that he never knew them. So he said that the only ones that are going to enter the kingdom of heaven is those who do the will of the Father, which is in the heavens. Does that sound like salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, apart from works? Praise Yahuwah. All right, we're going to continue. It's not just this. We're going to continue. Matthew chapter 19. And please, let's just read this for what it says, rather than putting the proto-Orthodox Christian theological spin on it. Just read it for what it says. Matthew 19 and verse 16. It says, And see, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good shall I do to have everlasting chai, everlasting life? And he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one, Allahim. But if you want to enter into chai, if you want to enter into life, guard the commands, keep the commandments. And he said, which? And Yahusha said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, respect your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the young man said to him, all these I have watched over from my youth. What do I still lack? Yahusha said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in the Shamaim, and come and follow me. Hallelujah. So, he told him, if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. And brothers and sisters, it's sad that we can't just take this at face value, but we got to put a spin on it and say that Yahusha was playing a mind game on the rich young ruler. He didn't really mean what he said because nobody can keep the law. He just he told him that so that he would recognize his need for the Messiah. Praise Yahuwah. Well, let's look at a second witness then. Let's look at a second witness. Luke 10, Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, and we're going to deal with this issue of the law being so impossible to keep, that nobody uh, nobody can keep the law. We're going to deal with that too, and we're going to deal with it even in the New Testament writings. Praise Yahuwah. 
But in Luke chapter 10 and verse 25, we're going to start there. It says, And see a certain one learned in the Torah stood up, trying him and saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting chai, everlasting life? Same question. How do you answer? And he said to him, What has been written in the Torah? How do you read it? And he answered, he answering said, You shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this and you shall live. But he, wanting to declare himself righteous, said to Yahusha, And who is my neighbor? And so Yahusha went on to talk about the Good Samaritan. Praise Yah. But the point being is that he was asked the same question by someone else. And so what's going on here? Is he playing another mind game? Is he just telling him to do what's written in the Torah, even knowing in the back of his mind that, you know, it's impossible to do? Praise Yah. Is this just another mind game or is he teaching in line with the Torah and the prophets? Just like he said. Praise Yahuwah. Can you imagine if somebody were to ask today, well, what do I do for eternal life? And you were to answer, what's written in the Torah? How do you read it? People look at you like you're crazy. Praise Yah. But that's exactly how Yahusha answered this question. Praise Yah. And now, now that we're in the book of Luke, let's turn to Luke chapter one, because I want to deal with this lie that nobody can keep the Torah. The Yahusha was playing a mind game on these people because he knew that no man can keep the Torah. Praise Yahuwah. Luke chapter 1 and verse, praise Yahuwah, verse 5 and 6. It says, And there was in the days of Herodes, Herod, the sovereign of Yehuda, a certain Kohen, a priest named Zechariah, of the division of Abiah and his wife of the daughters of Aharon. Her, her name was Elisheba. And they were both righteous before Elohim, blamelessly walking in all the commands and righteousnesses of Yahuwah. This is before the so-called cross, all right? This is before Yahusha went to the state. And they were walking in all the commands and righteousnesses of Yahuwah, blameless, so that's a lie that nobody can keep the Torah and that Yahusha was playing a mind game on these people because he knew they just could not keep the commandments. Praise Yahuwah. No, he was teaching them exactly what the Torah and the prophets already taught them. That's why he said, what is written in the Torah? How do you read it? Because in other words, you've already been given the answer. Hallelujah. And aside from that, this idea that we cannot keep the commandments, Yahusha told a whore, go and sin no more. This was a whore. This wasn't a, one of the lawyers or the Pharisees or somebody deep in the scriptures. This was a whorish woman caught in adultery. And he told her, go and sin no more. Why would he tell her that or she couldn't do that? That man that was healed at the pool of Bethesda, Bethsaida, praise Yah, he was told, sin no more lest a worse thing happen unto you. Why would he tell him that if he couldn't do that? He's telling these people to keep the commandments from then on. Why would he tell them that if they couldn't do that? Was he playing a mind game on them? On them? Was, he, was he saying that just so they would bumble and stumble and fall and realize their need for him? No. He was telling them what the Torah and the prophets already told them. Praise Yahuwah. So, lest you think that this is just something that only had relevance before the so-called cross. All right, we're going to look at we're going to look at a couple things that are after the so-called cross, after the stake. Let's look in the book of Revelation. So we're going to look at what Yahusha taught regarding eternal life. He taught what the Torah and the prophets taught. In Revelation, and chapter twelve is the first place we're going to go, talking about the dragon chasing after the woman. Praise Yah, Revelation 12, 17. And it said, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed, who, those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and possessing the witness of Yahusha HaMashiach. 
praise Yahuwah. This is future. This is after the stake, after the so-called cross. Praise Yah. And the true believers here are the ones keeping the commandments of Yahuwah and possessing the witness of Yahusha HaMashiach. Hallelujah. All right, now Revelation 14. Revelation 14, this is after the three messengers, so-called angels, give their message. And then Revelation 14, verse 12, it says, Here is the endurance of the Kodeshim, or saints in the King James. Here are those guarding the commands of Yahuwah in the belief of Yahusha. In the King James, it says, those who keep the commandments of Yahuwah in the faith of Yahusha. Praise Yahuwah. And so this is after the stake. Praise Yah. See, this is why Yahusha, he commissioned the apostles, the true apostles now. Praise Yah. Those who actually walked with him physically and were witnesses of his, of his resurrection. That's what Peter said the criteria was for a true apostle. So to the true apostles, he told them to teach the nations all things whatsoever he has commanded them. They were not to deviate one iota from what the Messiah taught. Well, brothers and sisters, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but we have deviated a long way from what Yahusha has taught in this modern-day proto-Orthodox Christianity. Praise Yahuwah. And it's because, simply put, that he's not the chief cornerstone of that. He is not the chief cornerstone of modern-day Christianity. Like I said, modern-day Christianity is built on the foundation of the so-called church fathers, the church councils, and Paul being the chief cornerstone. Praise Yahuwah. But if you, if you build on the solid rock, then you're going to teach people the same thing about eternal life that Yahusha t- taught. Praise Yah. And look at the end time believers. Praise Yah. This ain't no grace alone, faith alone, without works. Uh-uh. Praise Yahuwah. And I'm going to prove it to you at the very end here. I'm going to prove it to you at the end of Revelation. But the end time, true believers, true remnant, is going to be those who keep the commandments of Yah and have the belief in Yahusha HaMashiach. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. Verses 13 and 14 of Revelation 22. Verses 13 and 14. It says, I am the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Baruch or blessed are those doing his commands, keeping his commandments, so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city. Praise Yahuwah. And so we see that the true believers mentioned in Revelation 12, Revelation 14, that they weren't just keeping the commandments just for fun, praise Yah. But here we see it clearly linked to eternal life, praise Yahuwah. So faith without works is dead, brothers and sisters. And just like James said, by works a man is justified and not by faith only, praise Yahuwah. And so we obtain eternal life by believing in Yahusha and keeping the commandments. Praise Yahuwah. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. And if you disagree with me, if you disagree, my challenge to you, so-called black Christians, so-called urban apologists, my challenge to you is that you prove what I have taught in this video wrong. Prove it wrong only using the words of Yahusha. Don't do not bring any epistles, anybody's epistles into this. Uh-uh. Only using the words of Yahusha disprove what I said. Disprove what I have taught in this video. Praise Yahuwah. Disprove that Yahusha taught exactly what the Torah and the prophets already taught regarding eternal life. Praise Yahuwah. So I'll leave it with that. Once again, I will say that uh, I thank you for tuning in to this channel. If you're being edified by what I'm putting out, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell as you subscribe, and share this with your friends. Share this with your family. Partner with me to be Yah's hands and feet to reach out to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Praise Yahuwah. So that is all for now. And with that, I will say, 
Shalom.